Hello and welcome to a millinery techniques video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm making white lilies out of silk. Why specifically white lilies? Well, because St. Catherine's Day is coming up on the 25th of November. St. Catherine's Day is becoming a more and more popular millinery celebration. I don't have the time today to get into the origins of this festival, but maybe next year I'll dive into the history and the social connotations of this saint's day. So without further distraction, let's gather the materials and get started. First things first, we need to make the stamens. For a comprehensive list of the supplies needed, have a look at the description box below. Put one tablespoon of semolina into a plastic tub. Add in half a teaspoon of turmeric or your colorant of choice. Then add one teaspoon of water. Mix everything together. This is easier to do by hand, but make sure you wear a glove to protect your skin from the dye. Set the mixture aside to fully dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to decant mine into a small container with a sealable lid. The next step is easier with cotton covered millinery wire, but I didn't have enough, so I'm using copper jewellery wire and covering it in waxy florist tape to make it white. You'll need 7 lengths of about 10 cm for a single lily flower. To make the sepal, attach 3 flower stamens to the end of one of your cut wires. I've used a double threaded needle to secure it before binding it together with more florist tape. Back to the stamens. Bend the end of the wire to form a hook 1 cm from the end. Bend that hook into a T-shape with about 3 mm at the bent end. Then cut the excess off the other end to match. Dip each T-bend into a pot of PVA craft glue and then into the pollen mixture. Balance your stamens on something to dry. Let's make the petals. I'll be using flower tools for these. If you don't have flower tools, I have a video on how to make hand-shaped flowers which I'll link to in the top right. Here is the petal pattern. Take a screenshot and print it out. You'll need to cut out five petals on the bias of some white silk dupion. Dip each petal fully into some water and then halfway into some diluted green silk paint. This will give it a very subtle gradient. Or just skip this step, it's not the most important thing in the world. Leave the petals to dry on some baking paper. Then you'll need more lengths of wire. Make these about 3 cm longer than your petals. Once your petals are dry, position them right side down on the baking paper on an ironing board. Place the wires as centrally as possible on each petal. It shouldn't reach the tip. Next, place bits of bonder web over the petal and wire and cover that with a bias strip of white silk dupion. Cover all of that with some more baking paper and iron it all together with the iron set to a medium dry setting. Make sure your petal sandwich is cool before peeling the paper away. Cut around the petal shape to remove the excess backing silk. Now, the exciting bit, the flower tools. I'll be using a double knife, single knife and a rat tail or hook. I know flower tools can seem super daunting and I certainly still feel overwhelmed by trying to learn all about what the different tips do and why they exist. As I learn more I will endeavour to make a video about my findings. Let's just pause here to talk safety. These tips are inserted into a soldering iron which gets hot. Make sure you are sitting right next to the plug socket so that you can flick it on and off to regulate the heat. Have a stand and a silicon mat ready to protect your surfaces. And never, I repeat, never touch the shaft or the tip of the soldering iron while it is plugged in or hot. Always follow the manufacturer's health and safety instructions when using such devices. I am going to use the tools against four layers of felt which I've covered with multiple layers of cotton fabric to create a slightly cushioned surface. 
I'm going to start with the double knife tool to edge the central wire with the petal facing right side up. Go slowly and let the wire curl up as you push the tool into the cushioned surface. A full disclaimer here, I don't actually know if my technique is correct. I'm figuring it out as I go along. Next, turn the iron off, let it cool, and change the tip to a single knife. Once it heats back up, I'm going to add texture to the leaves by adding lots and lots of little lines up and down the petal following the shape of the curved edges. Then I'm changing the tip in the same way as before, this time to the rat tail or hook. I'm going to turn the petals over and drag the hook with some pressure along the edge of the petal. This will curve the edges outwards. There we go, all done. Aren't they all so pretty? Now to assemble it. Position the six stamens around the sepal and bind them together. I'm positioning my sepal one centimeter below my stamens as I think it looks more pleasing that way. You can use either the florist tape or a double threaded needle. Now add the five petals. They should be added one by one with each petal overlapping. I'm positioning the base of my petals about 4 cm below the stamens. Add some curvature to the petals and this flower is almost done. You can choose to stop here, cover the wires in florist tape and you'll end up with a really lovely flower on a short stem. Or you can extend the stem by adding a 1mm galvanised wire and then covering that in florist tape. An even better idea would have been to make the sepal on the long 1mm galvanised wire. But this is what I get for not thinking ahead. Learn from my mistakes, plan your project before starting it. If you're not satisfied and want to make your flower even better, add some leaves. Here is the pattern. You'll need to cut out one of each and then prepare a bias strip for the backing fabric. I didn't have any green silk, so I'm quickly painting mine using the leftover green silk paint. Once they are dry, it's the same sandwiching process as with the petals, so let's skip straight to the shaping. I'm trying a slightly different order of operation on these leaves. I'm going to start with the single knife to add veins to the right side of the leaf. Following up with the double knife to add definition to the central wire. I didn't like this order of operations too much, so in the future I'll just do it the same way as for the petals. With the help of Drusilla, I'll assemble another flower so that I can add the leaves to this one. To add the leaves, I'm placing the smallest leaf 2cm down from the base of the flower. I'm choosing to attach it by wrapping it tightly with the florist tape, but for extra security you could twist the leaf wire around the main flower wire and then wrap it. I then place a medium leaf very close to the small one but slightly off to the side, and then the same with a larger one. Wrap the florist tape to the very end of the stem, and that's the lily with the leaves complete. Now, what to do with these lilies? I have two ideas. First, I'll set one on an alligator hair clip, then I'll position two lilies on a straw bandeau. I'm going to start by curling the end of the flower stem into a coil. I like how whimsical this looks.
To make the alligator clip setting, I'm going to use two small rectangles of white felt offcuts. I'm going to sew one rectangle to the flower, then in the second rectangle I'm going to make four slits that are large enough to insert the clip through. Next, I'm going to sew one to the other. And, oh, I changed my mind and rounded the rectangles into ovals. I was sewing along quite happily, and then this happened. <sighs> On my feather cask video, Immaculate Dean asked, why does the waxy thread work better with felt? Well, this is why. I really should listen to my own advice. Wax your thread, everybody. Anyway, here's the finished Lily hair clip. I think it's perfect as a simple bridesmaid's hair piece. These hair clips are available to purchase from my shop. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Moving on to the hat setting. I'm using a knotted rami straw. I've never blocked straw on a block like this before, so let's see how this goes. Normally, I'd use some blocking net as a support structure for the straw, but it's currently not available and this straw is pretty stiff already as it's from an old charity shop hat. If you'd like to learn more about blocking net, I've linked to my video on that at the top right. I'm going to give myself a 2cm edge to work with. Normally, before cutting straw, I would run two parallel lines of stitching on it with a sewing machine. But that would be impossible on this shape, so instead I'm going to stop the edges from fraying by covering them with a thick layer of PVA craft glue. I've already shaped and joined my wire, and to sew it in I'm using a blunt cross stitch needle. When working with straw, you don't want to pierce it, but rather weave the needle through the crisscross of the straw. I'm using the same type of wire stitch as I would on any other hat. I've got a video on this in the top right. It's much easier to put the fastening in before putting in the ribbon. For this hat, I'm using a pronged elastic to match my hair colour. I'm using an awl to prise open a gap in the weave of the straw and poking the elastic through. Then I'm going to do the same on the other side, but here I'm going to put a knot into the elastic to make it tight enough for my head. In theory this is adjustable by pulling on the elastic and moving the knot. To finish the edges I'm going to sew in some Petersham ribbon. I've cut two lengths of ribbon and curved them with the iron on a medium dry setting. When putting in the ribbon, sew the shorter curve to the edge of the hat, not the longer one. This means the ribbon lays flatter once it is sewn in. I've gone back to a sharp millinery needle for the ribbon, and I've chosen to match my thread to the straw rather than the ribbon. To find the perfect flower position, I've employed Anne as my model. I think the flowers look lovely set to one side towards the back. As for the number of flowers, Three was too many, one wasn't special enough, so two is the Goldilocks amount. I'll just quickly sew them on. I'm not using wax thread here as I don't think it is necessary with straw. As I was sewing, I noticed that some of my copper wire was poking out through the thin wax paper. This wouldn't have happened if I had used thin cotton-covered millinery wire in my leaves, but I had run out while I was making these. Not to worry, I'm going to colour the copper wire using a Tipex pen. And I'm all done. Time to step back and marvel at the beauty that I've created. This model is available made to order from my website. I think it's perfect for a simple registry office ceremony. It would look amazing with a bridal trouser suit or even a sheath or column satin dress. If you've got any questions for me, leave me a comment down below. I always do my best to reply. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you have, please like and subscribe as this really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. For more hat related content you can follow me on Instagram at Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye!